It shows. Seems that Google has a bug. Google 87. All right, it looks like we're all right. Hang on. Okay. Right on. Welcome, everybody, on the live and replay. Todd Medina, Soul Speaks 5D. We've got a new friend in here, Etienne, from Canada. Uh, we're going to allow people time to come in, give them a little time to come in. We are going to have another show in an hour and 45 minutes with Marie Batchelor. So these are two powerful shows. Etienne comes very uh, highly recommended <clears throat> by a beautiful Syrian soul sister of mine, Carrie Chu. So we're going to look forward to getting to know him in just a few minutes. We're going to have a conversation in typical Sology style, spontaneous, intuitive, creative, imaginative. And depending on what we're talking about or doing, courageous, uh, the true essence of the I am soul. So stick around. We'll be back in a minute and 19 seconds. <laughs> Just a couple of quick announcements before we jump into this conversation. I, for some reason, I haven't done this in a long time. I'm being told to recognize people in the audience. So Zana Kozar, who's been a big supporter, Juliet Springett, Trevor James, Terry Willette, Allison in New York. Thank you for the beautiful message last night. Stephen Savage, see you soon. Lisa Christine Froyland, where have you been? Long time no see. Hope you're doing well. Kathy Wadowski, Dane Jones, I know you're kicking it with your new uh, flame over there. I see that, Dorian. It's good to see you in Utah. Carrie Chu, what's happening? Thank you for bringing Etienne in our field. And uh, Delia, Sue, Baxter Fitz, and Robert, and everybody else. Good to see you. David Icke is coming on first part of January. We're going to put that post out about two days before the show happens. So be looking forward to that. And if anything happens to us on Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, Twitter, whatever, um, you can always catch these shows every single day on SolarGeneetwork.com. Please go check us out and go into our Sology store and see if you can find some Sology swag and maybe uh, be a little billboard for us. Etienne uh, and I had a short conversation uh, before we jumped on, and it's a pleasure to be here uh, with him. Uh, thank you for coming in and honoring us with your presence. I think the big question here everybody wants to know is, uh, have you always been this weird or did you wake up this way? <laughs> <laughs> have you always been, have you always been like this or did you have like a, a no, traditional? No, uh, when, when I was a kid, I was, I was a nerd. I was a computer programmer. Didn't have too much social life. It was just like, very, very logical person. I started doing programming when I was like nine year old. Wow. I've been programming my whole life. So that's in the, in the past life. Things have only been start, starting to open around 2000, uh, around 2010, 2012 is when the things have been starting to open. So it's been opening up gradually, but it's just starts a little bit, 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 but then it just keeps taking weird, unexpected shifts and turns that there's no way we could see it coming. And I'm like, it's like, where does that come from? And I'm like, oh, okay, I thought it's like doing pretty well, but it's like, what is that about? And it just keeps taking really weird turns that shift everything. Isn't, isn't and that amazing? Make, and the deeper you go, the weirder it gets. 
I know. Isn't that amazing, though? And I've watched a lot of that happen this year in 2020. Uh, you, you know, one thing about Ascension growing up, as my wife calls it, uh, it it create it it requires humility, and uh, you can't fake humility. And so it's been interesting this year watching people who have uh, many people who have been out there leading people for many years, and bless them, you know, for doing that. Uh, but this ascension requires us to change constantly, and every time we think we got it figured out, what happens is what you just described. So it's a it's a really good time to be humble. <laughs> because uh, the lessons that are coming in now are a little bit rougher than they used to be, don't you think? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I get the impression, I didn't go to your site. I asked, uh, I was trying to get to it last night, but I never could. I get the impression you have a very galactic connection, a galactic makeup. Uh, yes. Was when this started for you, 2010, 2012, did the Galactics step in and uh, indoctrinate you, or did they no. come later? No. Uh, do, do, it, it came later. Everything came at a different pace. Do you want to know when I started getting the first Galactic Connections? Yeah, that's fine. Well, I was living in different places around the world. I was living, now I'm in Mexico, in Playa del Carmen, and I was in Playa del Carmen that was probably 2014, 2015, maybe. And just crazy energetic attacks um, coming from, it was like, I, mean, I have my apartment, just the neighbors in front of the house. There's a really, really, really nasty energy. They, they play really loud music. It just grips onto the energy, locks everything. I'm like, what, what the heck is that? And, and, and it's kind of, it's like I would I would channel the energy that would it would take to heal a thousand cancers and it wouldn't even like move that around, and I've been having a lot of challenges, a lot of a lot a lot of challenges. And then I was at, at a point where I don't have any money to eat, I don't have any money to even like to to refill to buy new water. I'm like okay, what am, am I gonna do? And I said okay, so there's some friend we're hosting an event in. Uh, in New York, so if I cannot buy water or food, okay, I went to eat at a small restaurant around my house, told her, uh, like, if I can just b borrow some money to, to buy the food because I don't have anything and I'll pay her later. And if I could borrow her just enough money to buy a bus ticket to the airport, which is like $10. And she said, okay. So I had enough on my PayPal to buy a plane ticket, that I, $125 round trip to New York, uh, to Ohio. Uh, and then she borrowed me for a bus ticket and for the food. So I just took the bus, got to the airport, fly to Ohio. They went to pick me up and drove me to their house and then and, and went to the event over there. And she, it turned out that she was, uh, she used to be the empress of the, of the Orion Federation. And then she kind of briefed me on that whole thing. And I, I was not expecting that. And then she made me realize that the reason I was having so much challenges in Playa del Carmen is because I was sitting right on top of the second largest Draco base on the planet, mm -hmm. under the island of Cozumel. I'm like, oh, really? And then the trip back was a little bit explosive. So, th so this friend of yours, the one that was in New York, she said she was an empress of Orion, right? Yeah. Is that right? Okay. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so now, for her, was that through uh, like a future life progression, past life progression, uh, or was she actually in some type of time travel state where she was consciously moving between dimensions? No, um, I mean, mo most of the mo most of the most powerful souls in the universe they're incarnated on Earth right now. Yeah, she I she know. was the Empress of of uh, Orion. It's it's basically the equivalent of, of Gaia on this planet. Mm -hmm. So she, she's like the, the planet. Then the planet got destroyed 12,000 years ago. So it's like if her stomach was completely blown apart ac 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 across the, the galaxy. And it's kind of a, it, it's, it's kind of amazing that, that she's still alive and that she, she could still incarnate. But she's that when, when she like for a. Uh, it's like for a planet to explode like that and then to incarnate back into a human body, it, it still leaves a lot of scars. But she's had enough memories to, to be able to 
yeah. kind of get me started mm -hmm. to she's like a lot part of, of my soul. <clears throat> she's like a lot of it. She has some memory, which I look at as code. Uh, she's incarnated here for a reason, just like you, just like me. Uh, and I think this is a couple of things are interesting because <clears throat> last night was a very busy night in dimension for me. And first thing that was in my head when I woke this morning was Orion. And I do remember uh, a few years back for a, about a year and a half, downloading a lot about the galactic wars. Orion's a big part of that. Uh, so the fact that you're bringing it up needs to be mentioned. And the other thing uh, is... You know, I was just researching a couple days ago, uh, and I don't know how I got onto this video, but it was it was a video that that showed what the oceans were, or what the water on this Earth was, which is ninety nine percent the mass of the Earth. Now that's crazy. Then they showed how deep the ocean is, and they showed different things like uh, the Titanic or just different different objects, large objects to show you how. Bottom line is that the, and they have names for the different, the different uh, levels of the earth. But if I'm not mistaken, the deepest level was 35,000 feet. 35,000 feet, which is huge. Because I, I think what a, a mile is is a mile. I think a mile is uh, like 16. Anyway, it's a lot. It's a whole, whole lot. 35,000. Uh, I, I test, I, I must have test 89% accurate. So it's close yeah, to it. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. So what I'm trying yeah. to say is when I was watching this, which was unrelated to, let's just say unrelated to uh, specific research, let's say the galactic or underground bases or anything. It wasn't like that. I just landed there. You know how that happens. And I realized, I thought, wow, there is 99% of our mass is under the water. There's so deep, you can't even you can't even go down there. That's how deep it is. It's so deep that there's no sunlight. That's how deep it is. And uh and and I thought to myself, man, there's got to be there's got to be huge representation of multiple uh star family um you know, civilizations and bases. Not just inner Earth, but inner in, in the sea. So that's interesting that you bring that up about the second largest Draco base is under Cosmo. Well, now this is the, so. Are you pretty close with this lady that you're talking about that that carries the energy of the Empress of Orion? Um, yeah, you yeah, talk uh, regularly. Yeah, people like her. her. Yeah, I mean, do you? But do you do you pull in your information from this group? Uh, from from this group? like you and her and whoever else is involved, or do you pull it from downloads or both? No, I, I, I pull in from, um, from, from the, well, I mean, so, sometimes downloads, but I, it's, it's not really getting information from a higher source of way. See, it's just opening your eyes so you're able to see yourself. Yeah. If exactly. you're able to see directly, you don't need any other entities to tell right. you the information. If you're able to see it directly, that's that's better, I think. Yeah. But yeah, I do get yeah. downloads. But if you get downloads, you have to be sure, sure um, uh, have to make sure to look at where it's actually coming from. That's right. It's like if if I tell you something, or you tell me something, or she tells you something, my friend tells me something. It's the same thing. See, me, we've got to a point now where you have uh, you have the downloads coming in. You have. Uh, and they can come in from the non-physical, let's say, from our other aspects, our other aspects. They can come in from you and I, as I watch it happen every day on the show. Uh, but the same level of discernment applies, right? We can't give our power away to anything outside of us, yes. regardless of what it is, right? Especially right now, because we're completely surrounded by misinformation everywhere. Mm -hmm. We're inundated in misinformation by purpose. Yeah. Even the higher planes are being invaded. So the 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 it's really taking over people's uh, uh, like what what's happening in the higher realms is really taking over people's discernment and judgment. So people really need to to even if it comes from higher realms to really pay attention to where it's actually coming from and whether there is distortion.
Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I agree with you. There is, there is a, and, and this is something that I will talk to David Icke about next month and other people like yourself. Um, it seems like we're in a time now, well, at least in the communities, the, the community that I'm involved with, which is not just Solji, but, but let's call it light worker community, disclosure community, conspiracy community. They're kind of different, but there is some common ground. And that is that it seems like there's enough of us on the earth now that have enough of a sense of their own essence and are operating on their own free energy, uh, utilizing discernment, utilizing access to the Akashic, however you want to describe it, that no matter what's coming from out there, the power still lies within ourselves. And yet we may not have an instruction manual or a book telling us how to do it, but we're figuring out how to do it. How do you sit with that? Does that resonate with you? That's what I used to think up until recently. Hmm. That, that's what I was thinking for the past four years since 2016, when the Dracos got eliminated in 2016. So from, I, I was thinking from six, 2016 to 2020, things have been kind of escalating, but it's just kind of like cleaning up. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's but there's more going on, and people are not talking about that, and that's why I wanted to uh, come on your show and to talk about it. Talk about that. Talk about it. Yeah. So uh, since I ca came back to Mexico eight months ago, I've been under nonstop attacks. A lot of groups trying to kill me, trying to kill my daughter. It's it's just been nonstop. I have not been able, able to work for for eight months. But now it's not just us. A lot of other people are getting attacked. Are you good at doing muscle testing? No, I don't do that. My wife does it. Let me ask you this. Um, let me ask you this. This is a good conversation. So, because, because we're here, I come here to pick up code. Mm -hmm. And you can only pick up code with an open mind. This is my own philosophy. And I don't have to, I'm not saying it's gospel for everybody. But in terms of, uh, I think everybody here, has ex most of the people that come on here that are tuned in here, most of them on or around 2012 kind of woke up. Now, there's others like my wife who've been doing it for 25 years. Some go back to the 60s of the last uh, the last century. Uh, one of the things that has been talked about is what are these energies coming at me? And w what what is my role in magnetizing them to me? And I guess the third part of it is, are these or are these, not, are these or are these not mirrors, energetic mirrors of myself bringing to me those things that I need for my soul? So how do you stand with that? Because what I'm hearing from you is that things have changed for you since you moved back to Mexico. And if I'm not mistaken, is there a separation in mind between those things that are attacking you and yourself. Um, that, that's one thing that I, I found a lot, like in the, the way spirituality is being taught as a whole, is to always like look uh, like from a perspective of the personal self. But there's stuff that happens on a planetary basis. There's things that happen on a galactic level. Things that happen on the universe level. Yes. And and for when things happen on the scale of the entire universe, your own personal experience in it is not really that relevant. It's more where are you standing? Like if there's a tsunami coming, what's your relationship to the tsunami or what are, what's your role to play in it? So certain things are personal experiences, but there's also collective experiences that impact a lot of uh, that, that that impact either the, the 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 country as a whole, the planet as a whole, or the universe as a whole. Yeah, I I agree with you. Kind of like the ascension, you know. Let go. Like, like the ascension, it's not. There, there's nothing yeah, personal about the ascension. That's right. It doesn't. The, 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 it doesn't matter what you think about it. You're you're gonna go through that's it right. anyway. It's just it you're gonna go through the, walk, the, the 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 legs down or the or the legs up and falling <laughs> down the stairs. <laughs> exactly. I don't think that's going to vary how you're going to go through it, but you're exactly. still going to pass there. Uh, and, you know, one of the things, and I'm going to just kind of like throw stuff together from what I picked up on the show, what I picked up on my own and so on, in terms of the history. Because one thing I noticed about the downloads I've been getting about 
um, I'd say it's about five, six weeks ago, maybe, yeah, about six weeks ago, I started to get these downloads again after a, a four or five year period that I hadn't gotten them, which was specifically about galactic history, the makeup of the earth, the composition of the different star families and species, uh, and, and on and on and on. Now, one of the things that I've picked up from other people, and again, I'm not saying this is gospel, we're having a conversation, I'd love to get your view, is that these, these let's just call them, these higher uh, intelligent species that whether we're talking about Pleiadians or talking about uh, Dracos or whatever, they have some idea of how the universe operates and what you can and cannot do. Like, like there's a universal law or set of laws out there that are basic, like what goes around comes around, cause and effect, that type of thing. So the, the my understanding is that these lesser gods or these controllers, or whatever you want to call it, because a lot of narratives out there, they've known all along that this time was coming. They've known all along that the human hybrid soul species was going to wake up Mm -hmm. And the and the illusion I, and the distortion. I, I'm, I'm not worried about those controllers. They're 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 no longer relevant. The SSPs are irrelevant at this point. The what? They're, they're 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 not the threat. I'm not worried okay. about those, those controllers. Is, and I'm not worried, is there, worried is, about that. Is there a threat? Is there a threat? Um, so one one thing, when I was uh, me and other people were doing muscle testing about the the world population. And first of all, what's the actual population of the planet? 2019, we're, we're being taught it's 7.8 million, but it's, it's, if yeah. we muscle test it, it's actually 4.5 uh, billion instead of 7.8. But now, if we measure it now, instead of 4.5, we're getting 3.5. 3.5 billion. And, and I've taken a lot of time to, to study, uh, to, to look into details what actually happened there. But basically, 29.9% of the population disappeared from the planet without anyone noticing, without anyone talking about it. Okay. So so basically, 30% of the planet... 22.9. Uh, 22.9. I'm sorry, 22.9%. And this is in 2020? 2019, yes. 2020. So basically, which then is 22.9% of the population of souls incarnated in the human body Yes, uh, le are, are no longer on the planet. Yeah, and many and of them have been replaced by non-humans. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're saying that they've been moved, and then a clone or or some of uh, them. Ha some of them. Uh, this for some people, there's been a soul swap happening. So they took out a soul and took the place of the physical body. That's phase one. Now their phase two is they're killing, like they're infiltrating some people infiltrate the, the heart, the mind, infiltrate the core, take control of the DNA chain structures, destroy the physical body, and then they, 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 they take control of the memories and holographic body, and they take the person's place. Hmm, and now, and what I measure, like, I mean, if you know how to do muscle, muscle testing or validate the information in a way, the truth has a frequency to it. Va validate what I'm saying this because it's, I am. I'm, I'm actually doing it right now. I can yeah. feel, I can feel parts of my and body. And what I so, what I'm measuring is that 4.2 percent of the world population has been replaced with fakes like that by non-humans. 4.2 or 42. 4.2 percent of the population. So there's a lot of non-humans walking right next to us. Yeah, this is this is difficult for me, and I'm I'm open. I'm totally yeah. open, but. First and foremost, I go with it. And, and the, the only way to accept information like that is to be able to validate it in some way. And whether it's muscle testing or listening to it in a different way, the truth has a frequency. You can tune into that frequency to validate yeah. whether something is true or not. Well, and then, I mean, there's a couple of things here, okay? One is I look at everything is made of the same substance. I don't give a damn if it's a clone or a Draco. We all come from the same place. So I can... I can, as an energetic being and transformer and an alchemist and a magician, mm -hmm. I can work with any and all energies outside of myself. Uh, and that doesn't, that may sound a little easier than it might be, but this is kind of where I'm coming from. Now, the other thing is, uh, how do we know? Because, uh, because if I listen to what you're saying, I'm open to it. 
but I don't know. Now, there's parts of it that I can say yes, and there's parts of it that says, I've got to go look into this, if it's important to me. But how do I know, how do you know or not know, that there's whatever, let's say 4 billion people on the face of the earth today, and there's not 4 billion different earth experiences? The, uh, there are a lot of parallel timelines also. Mm -hmm. And yeah. because there's a lot of parallel timelines due to time, uh, time travel wars, which massively um, fragmented the timelines. Yes. And right now, the timelines are merging, and that's causing under problem. That's causing portals everywhere. And yeah. reality is, is kind of like ripping apart as those realities are merging. And that's another yeah. challenge that we're facing right now. And we have to be careful about, about those portals and, and stuff. Uh, Can, can I explain a little bit more about like what I see is happening? Yeah, if you want okay. to, go ahead. So I, I've been attacked by a lot of different groups, one after the other. It took me a really long time to see where it's actually coming from. I could never put my finger on it. And and now a lot of other people are get, getting attacked. Or, or lot of, what I see is most, like the, the majority of spiritual people, The, the, there's kind of a cloud above them and they're they're just kind of confused and there's something not quite right something that feels heavy but nobody is is really able to pinpoint where it's actually coming from and and it's actually attacks that come from be uh, from outside of the universe from beyond the multiverse Earth is going through ascension, but it's not just Earth. The Earth is... It's like where we're at in the cycle, it's like the, if you look at the clock, there's a, it's like there's a, all the needles turn, but at midnight, all of the needles align from the lowest to the highest, and all the... Like everything clicks at once from the lowest to the highest. And we're at that place where like everything is aligning and clicking at once. And things are not just shifting on Earth, They're shifting in the entire universe, in the entire multiverse, and, and, and even beyond that. But the attacks that are coming in come from, there, there's a universe in the multiverse, in the ultraverse. And there are demonic forces in the ultraverse, some of the most powerful forces of the ultraverse, that are trying to, to destroy the planet and collapse the universe as a whole. Their goal is to collapse the multiverse. So all the the the, the ESA, SSPs, the the Cabal, all of that, it's they're pretty much irrelevant compared to that. But oh, those four oh, I, I totally come agree from very that. very very high dimensional perspective. Well, like and and and, and like everything else in the universe, um, it has counterpart. I mean, God is Jesus and the devil, all right. If you want to put it in Christian terms, uh, as a lot of people have attested to, including myself, especially over the last couple of months, this room is filling up with more and more aspects of myself or my team. So these, this is a um, uh, an expanding energy complex that I've been aware of since I reawoke in 2011. They show me as God's greatest army, angels, archangels, galactics, elementals, dragons, you know, so, and I've said this many times, and there's been times that uh, I thought maybe you better not say something like that, but I've, and I was saying this in my example, because as a way to explain what many people out here um, have had experience with, and that is both dark energies and light energies. Uh, you know, I remember being told in 2016 on Lionsgate, We're adding another layer of protection around you because you're pissing off the light, uh, pissing off the dark. And we're putting an, a third layer of protection around you, but it's only as good as your faith in yourself. So what I'm trying to say is how, how the, you know, as within, without. If there is a capability in this universe that something can come into my field and overpower me without my consent. I kind of struggle with that. But if that's the case, as within, without, then from my inner core, from my field of energy, I should be able to invert that as well. 
if I want to go into the to the to the omni omni verses and counter a dark energy, then I can do that because I spend most of my nights doing it when I'm in dream state, like last. Yes, and mm -hmm. the the like you say, there's the dark net, there's the light. The the most powerful light warriors are here right now, and I'm sure many of them are listening to to this right here. Mm -hmm. And and I, I I listened to one of the interviews you did a couple of days ago. It was talking about responding versus reacting. Mm -hmm. You can respond to what's happening only if you can see it coming. If you don't see it coming then it hits you in the face, then you're only rea uh, you're, you're reacting instead of responding to it. So responding requires the awareness of what's coming at you. Yeah. You there? Yes. Okay. You froze. Oh, I froze. Um, I, so, I, if, so if, if, if something can come into my field, the reason I'm asking this, the reason I'm going down this road is because I see a lot of people still in fear and a lot of people giving their power away on live shows. I see the comments. When the subject matter gets to things like this, it scares people. It, in my opinion, can disempower people. So I'm very careful <laughs> about where I'm going with this. It's true. They and say, oh, well, I thought the Drake was left and we're all okay and we're going to live happily ever after. Or they take stances like that. That, that uh, that's cool. that's one thing that I, I would say the biggest the the biggest problem of the spiritual community as a whole is positive thinking. It can really be a curse. If if positive thinking is thinking constructively in terms of solutions, that's really good. If positive thinking means putting lens on that prevents you from looking at what is and responding to it then it really occurs because then the light workers are not defending the planet. They're not doing the mission that they came here on this planet to do. Our which job you, here is to defend you, the earth, but for that, we need not only to look at the beautiful, we need to look at reality for what it is, the, the, the beautiful and the ugly. Absolutely. Our, especially so the things saying, that we need to heal. So you're, I'm just trying some clarity. So you're saying that the light workers duty is to defend the earth. Well, the, the light. The reason all of the most powerful light workers came here on this planet is to assist the the planet in the process of ascension, and to make sure the planet doesn't get destroyed, to make sure that the universe doesn't get destroyed, to keep to keep the balance, and and to make sure that we go into a positive timeline. But we can only do so if we accept to look at things that are really not pretty. And to deal with the things that that nobody else, uh, either that nobody else wants to deal with, or nobody else has the capability to deal with. The strongest souls have the responsibility to deal with things that others don't have the capa capacity to to resolve. I, I agree with you. I, I totally agree with you. Now, my question is, because we're energy, uh, we have to deal with. The, the the lightest light and the darkest dark. That's a light worker. That's what you're talking about. Can those things, can the dark be addressed in what we might call our personal life, our personal experience, our past life memories, our current life experiences, traumas, memories? Can we bring alignment through the work we do within ourselves that will automatically externalize and project outward as a amplification of our transformation. And, and, and will that counter things like these dark energies that you're speaking of coming in? Uh, the answer, yes, yes and no. Yes, before, like, like before really getting in, in the area, in, uh, like in the area now and, and really dealing with the like, with the big stuff you need to be able to deal with your own internal stuff and and really to heal yourself to really awaken your own inner power like get 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 your stuff together uh, but if you I, I see a lot of people they just keep working on their, their themselves endlessly and kind of stay stuck there without really they develop all these powers and gifts and never really do anything with it 
So if you only always work on yourself, then it's like it also also needs to be put into application to to do something with with all of those gifts that you're awakening. So it takes both. But first, so what, would, you need what, to do would it, what would an example be of the second one? If the, if the first one is Todd's working on himself, where he was had uh, blind spots and conscious programming, he's deprogramming, reprogramming. And creating a higher frequency, and that is my offering to the collective, to the earth, to the universe, and so on. Uh, what would another example be uh, of, of the same thing that you're talking about? It takes both. What would that be? Would that be Todd sitting in this chair every day, uh, broadcasting shows uh, for me, or would it be, you know, I mean, serving some? We you know, we we all have. A God, uh, like something to contribute into the world, a God-given mission that we need to accomplish. So it, maybe it's it's maybe you need to do YouTube videos and share the awareness with mm -hmm. other people. Some other people, everybody has a different mission, but it's not about you figuring out. Okay, I'll do that because that's what I want to do. No, what does actually God needs of you? Yeah. So you connect with God, and like, can just do a prayer, God. Please show me my life purpose, and I will be forever your humble servant, and just be being in service to that, to that greater flow of uni universal energy, and, and finding your specific place because everybody's got a different piece to play in that. Okay, so I want to tie this back to what we started with because of the the um, what you're talking about in terms of being you personally being attacked and your daughter being attacked. Uh, and many people being attacked, uh, and the and, and and I've I've uh, realized that several of several people I, I personally know that have been killed and replaced by non-humans. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not discounting any of that. I'm just saying I want to try to pull it back to what can we do, and so if there are these forces, if. There are these forces that can come from outside of ourselves and that can infiltrate us, unbeknownst to us, which sounds a little bit um, alarming because that would mean we're not as powerful as we've been inclined to believe. Mm -hmm. How do we counter that alleged energetic force that's okay. looking to bring us out of alignment or destroy us or whatever. How yes. do we counter So the, the first step in order to counter it is to understand where it's coming up, uh, what's ha happening, what is, to, to understand the situation, that's really the first step. You cannot you cannot respond to it, you cannot address it if, if you don't understand it. And I, and I already released several videos where I explained the whole situation, so I don't want to repeat the, the same things. But um, but one, what, what's happening with these energies that are infiltrating? It's causing energetic infections that are. It it kind of gets into the body. It feels like a stain of ink in the arms, in the hands, in the head. It feels foggy. It distorts the, the perceptions. That is actually the the uh, like at, at the origin of life. There's a rays of creation. And those rays of creation, some of those rays have been hijacked from beyond the, from beyond this universe, and so the, some of the rays have been corrupted. Particularly the emerald green energy, the diamond ray. So some of those rays of creation have been hijacked. But it's genuine ascension codes. So I think that it is fueled by that. You you cannot destroy that energy because it's genuine ascension codes. But they've been hacked. And the hack does not come from this universe, so it cannot be resolved here. So that's one of the big problems. So the first thing that, that, that really matters is to start paying attention to those energetic infections. And, and pretty much everybody on the planet is infected. It's just a matter of degree. And to become aware of those infections, it, it completely distorts perceptions, judgment, even it get, when you get infected, it, it's hard to muscle test because it really causes a lot of distortion. But once you become aware of those corrupted rays causing energetic infections, 
then you can start taking actions to clear out those th those infections. But it's not it's it's not something that's going to be a uh, that, that's there is no quick solution to that. Uh, but the very first step is bringing out the awareness. Now you look at in, in the U.S. There is a big election takeover that's that's taking place. I I did not see that coming. Everybody thought that um, it's like the elections. Uh, well, Trump will get really. I don't want to go into politics, but everyone can see that. I, I don't care like which side. Like, uh, what do you think about any of the can candidates? Everyone, whether Republican, Democrat, can see that there's been a lot of fraud and an election takeover taking place. But the reason that this could happen is because there are very, very, very powerful forces that have been behind this takeover. And that's okay. directly related to those forces and those energetic in infections. So that's why it's important to resolve that at the source of where it's actually coming from. Well, let's say that that's true. And, uh, you know, let's say that Q's true and Trump is true and the election was a fraud. And, you know, at the end of the day, if that's true and if what you're saying is true, mm -hmm. that there are these nefarious forces coming from outside of this universe that have infiltrated this realm and have infiltrated each and every one of us, if that's the case, I would say it's been that way since the day we got here. But it's, I can't see, I can't see how that the other side of that spectrum, the other polarity, the light beings, the golden light beings, the dragon beings, whatever, that come from outside of the universe, just as these nefarious energies wouldn't be here present working just as hard. How, uh, I, I'll tell you, half of all of the guardians of the multiverse are he, came into this universe to assist with this. Hmm. What is happening on Earth is is going to determine what happens to the universe and the multiverse as a whole. So yes, all of half of the guardians of the entire multiverse are here. So yes, the light is there to combat it. And those attacks from the Ultraverse, they, there's been very, very, very major battles going on lately. They lost over 99% of their power already, but they're still very dangerous. They've lost 99% of their power. So, yeah, and because of that, a lot of other, un <clears throat> like, the, the, a lot of other universes have been able to shift back into positive momentum mm -hmm. because of so it's them not, focusing it's all their right. energy here. And yeah. then losing a lot of power there. It sounds like that if they've lost 99% of their power, that this is pretty much game over. Uh, there, there's to, uh, what, what I see is th this war against them is probably going to last seven years. Hmm. So there's going to be a lot of, there's still a lot of turmoil coming. Okay. So going back to what you said, what can we do? You said be aware of it. You have your your own so, sense of. Wait, hang on, I just want to ask yes, you a question. Yes, because I do see a similarity here, and I just want to point it out and see what your thoughts are, and give it to the people to decide for themselves. But when you said, okay, there are these these uh, infiltration infiltrating energies in my body, um, I need to become aware of it. Once I become aware of it, then I can start to develop my own our, our processes or modalities, either that come downloaded to me that I learn from a brother or sister, and I can start to to resolve the infiltration and to go to a higher alignment. Right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what you said. That to me sounds like uh, very much like, and I say this with the highest respect. Uh, it sounds to me like energy work. It sounds to me like transformational work, alchemic work. Uh, it sounds like inner work. Um, it sounds like deprogramming and reprogramming. It sounds like raising a higher frequency. The narrative just sounds a little bit different than the 500 other explanations out there. They're all one and the same, really, when you write down to it. But yes, um, it, it all comes would down you agree to with that? I just want to be, yeah, I just want to, yeah. And, and because... We do all have a tendency to get caught up in the story. And the story can be Archangel Michael's talking to me. 
he told me he was uh, my dad, you know, and, and you hold on to the attachment and you lose the message and the code that came in becomes secondary and subjugated to the to the metaphorical experience. Um, but yeah, this is this is this is good. Now, in terms of like um, where we're at, you mentioned the election. There are different narratives on that. That that actually is, I think, a topic that has split this light worker community. Yeah, and that's why I don't want to go into politics. No, no, no. I think it's important. <laughs> you said we got to go into the darkness mm, to find yes. gold, basically. So, you know, I, I started to write a, a, a meme the other night, and I wanted to say, I love Joe Biden. I love Donald Trump. And I don't give a shit what happens, because we're all choosing what happens. And as long as you stand on one side over here, and everyone else is on this side or the other people here, that's separation. We are the line of separation. You're the separation. I'm the separation for everything outside of ourselves that we don't own as ourselves. So I would love to see this get resolved. My understanding is that we're choosing the outcome that we want that best suits us. We're choosing that. And, and whatever that looks like on the surface is not, is not important. That's the story. It's the energetic behind it, like you said. Uh, like you said, uh, the ball, the Illuminati, stolen elections, uh, Q, all that stuff, that's not even a little piece of what you were referring to at the top of the show, the forces, good and, well, let's say light and dark, that are at play here through yes. us in yeah, these, these are only small pieces in the, in the, in yeah. the puzzle, but we need to look at the larger picture. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I look at it and go, okay, so if 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 I look at it for, as you or me or my wife or people I know, who I know have been on this journey, what's going to happen if tanks go down the street where I live and, and military's on every corner? you got to have papers to go anywhere. What's going to happen if there's an earthquake? What's going to happen if there's a flood, a war? Uh, a, a virus, whatever. Like, I feel like we're we've come this far. Love to hear your views on this. To maintain a neutral charge. To to embody a neutral charge. I almost look at the virus and go, "Hey, that's a natural thing." If it's the even. If it's the, even the, the virus was real, it's no longer there. It, it disappeared recently. It's what disappeared. Yes. Yeah. And it was fueled by those corrupt rays of creation. And yeah. we did some work on like fixing something and then the and then the virus just vanished. So so, so what's happening? what do you think is happening? Well, now, now ever since the virus vanished, now they went into very intensified lockdowns. And uh, what are they well, doing during that time? They're saying that there's mutant viruses now. It's even worse than it was. It's muted really 150 heard. times last year. What do you mean, like, there's muted I, I agree. one time I more? Agree. It's a virus. I, I agree. <laughs> I totally agree with you. So let's let's get it a little bit. And use the virus as an example. This I don't really like the term war because it creates, in my mind, even though I've been part of many of them, separation. But when people talk about a war on consciousness, we're not talking about, uh, again, the, the insignificant part is the Illuminati, the 1%, the controllers, the, 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 you know, we're talking at high levels here. Control of consciousness. Is the, was the COVID-19 virus, the organic natural one, if that's what happened, um, was it more dangerous, is it more dangerous than the headlines in the paper every day, the belief systems that we speak to each other, uh, that this is bad or this is good or this is a threat. What's more dangerous? Well, right now, what is happening? They're putting everybody in lockdown so they stay in their home while the police mm -hmm. and military are going and killing people uh, home by home. 
You're talking about killing who? The police and the military are killing the population. That, that's I, I, I took the time at looking at finding all the different causes of deaths. If really we lost 22.9% of the population, oh, where so that I actually agree. came from? And I came up with a whole list of reasons. I, I agree. But I, one list that was particularly hard for me to grasp is killed by the military, by, uh, killed by humans, by the military of the people. Who, is, all killing, of them. who is killing who and why? When you say military, you're talking about worldwide military? Uh, the it's uh, military? in certain, especially in, in Europe, France, Germany, Australia, uh, in, in Mexico, okay. China, the so military is killing the, their own population. Who are they killing and why? The population program. There's a lot of other reasons, a lot of non-humans also killing, but also the military. I also tested that it's about half the regular military and half that are mercenaries. It's I not mean, happening in the USA because they've not been able to take away people's guns and Trump is in power. So people are getting poisoned in the USA instead, being poisoned on a massive scale. Hmm. Well, I mean, you know, it's like that show I was watching. Um, one of the shows I was watching the last three or four days that, that specifically talked about deep, deep, deep under under ocean um, bases, star family bases, whether they're Pleiadian, Drake, or whatever, I don't know. Okay, and I don't care. But the point that the guy was making, and this was a government ex-government guy, I don't remember the details, it doesn't matter, but the fact that they've been coming and going out of the ocean for a long, long, long time, they've been there, that they obviously have this very high, highly intelligent technology, that in other words, if they wanted to harm us, they'd have done it a long time ago, right? Like before we became industrialized. Now, on the same note, we 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 are we are being withheld from what's being withheld from us is a lot of technology but there's a lot of technology out there we know exist mm -hmm. so in terms of like population control or depopulation like what you're talking about why wouldn't they and they have a uh, they have a uh, like a, what is it called like a death ray you know that they can they can just you know uh signal to a certain proximity of you know, a 20 mile diameter and, and just literally disintegrate everybody in that, in that area. Why wouldn't they just do something like that? I mean, they, they, they've tried all kind of, uh, they, they've tried all kind of apocalyptic scenarios, but it, everything they try to do gets, gets intercepted, gets stopped by either by human or by non-human forces or by angelic forces. But they've tried a lot of things, but most right. of the things they've, they've been trying have not. Okay, so they, they I'm, I'm, just trying, with it. Yeah, I'm trying to get some clarity here. Two things, and, and you say whatever you respond, please. You said that 99% of their power is gone. So I say, what the hell's the threat? Number two, are we, 92. number two, this is, Okay. Number it's not, two, not, not this, 92. No, no, no. That's, I measure 92.6%. Well, that means that there's a 7.4% power in what the hell I'm worried about. Now, that's just my take on it. And, yeah. And just, this, is the more, this is the more important part of the question. Okay. How in the hell are we going to send as a planet? And we know this is not just about the planet. Like you said, it's the solar system, it's the galaxy, universe, and so on, and so on, and so on. We're all in this together. And the 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 micro affects the macro as the macro affects yes. the micro. Okay. Now, how in the hell are we ever going to ascend if we keep referring to them as they, if we keep seeing this separation between dark and light, if we get caught up in the story that's playing out rather than seeing the beautiful divine orchestration that energetically it's built from. And, and I'm not saying this is gospel and I'm not saying this is true. I'm just asking a question. How are we ever going to find unity consciousness as long as there is a good good guys and bad guys scenario?
just trying to, to uh, find a, the best way to um, address the question. Just, just give me a second. No, no problem. I think there, there's a topic I wanted to talk about that I, I think would be good to, to to go into because talking about good guys, bad guys, it's kind of really black and white. And things are like things in real life are not black and white. There are people who think they're good, but their actions might be a little bit on the line, and they're not aware of the consequences of their actions. A lot of people think they're doing good. They they do certain things out of ignorance, not out of malice. If they do, if they do bad actions out of ignorance, is that a good person or a bad person? So it's not things are not black and white like that. Mm -hmm. So first of all, just saying black and white, it just um, it just covers the complexity of the situations. So we can let go of those labels to just look at reality for what it is. Um, and another aspect uh, that is important in that is that. In terms of energy, a lot of people that I hear talk about connecting to source, connecting your upper chakras to the white spiritual light, to the source of all creation. And most people focus on that white light. But there's actually two sources of light. There's the white light of creation going through your crown, uh, the, the white light of oneness that, that transcends duality. And then if you go down through the root chakra, and going down through the earth and keep going down, then there's a red light of creation, the root of all creation, the root of all roots. And if you're too focused on only one, if you're, if you're only focused on the white light of oneness, then your energy field looks like a reverse pyramid, your lower chakras are weak, and you don't really have your power of creation and causes all kind of disbalance. So both the white light of creation and the red, uh, the, the, both the white light of oneness and the red light of creation, both aspects are equally important, just as the masculine energy is just as important as the feminine energy. A lot of people go and focus just on, just on the feminine and then wage war against the masculine or vice versa. No, it's, and, and well, most people, it, either focus on just the feminine laws or just the masculine laws, but it takes a certain level of mastery to integrate both set of laws because it's really different spiritual laws, different principles. And it's the same with the white light of oneness or the red light of creation. There needs to be a balance there as well. And in the red light of creation, there is duality. There is ugly, there, there is bad things. And, and actually talking of the disbalance, uh, one of the big demons so like look at uh, Lilith and, and things like that, they, or Lucifer. Lucifer was known as the the like the like the, the like the great teacher, but he's actually teaching the truth of the red light, and rebelled against the white light. And there's truth in that, like the the principles of the red light. It's just if you focus only on the red light, then people develop their power in a corrupt way. So it, and if you develop just white light, then you develop that awareness that transcends reality but then you, you you can't create anything with it you don't do anything with it mm -hmm. so there needs to be that balance so you need so there's a need to develop more of that red light of creation stepping more into or grounded power while keeping it solidly anchored into the white light to keep integrity into it yeah and why mentioning this it's something i just realized the last couple of days is the corruption of the rays mostly in, corrupts the, the, the white light. 98% of the corruption is in the white light. So I've been guided lately to focus more into the... So far, I've been mostly white light and going more balanced, but I've been more white light. But now I'm being guided to really shift more towards the red light, more like 78% red light, and keeping that anchor into the white light in order to shift the energetic, energetic frequency that I'm operating, operating with to not be affected so much by the, those uh, energetic infiltration and corruptions. 
And that the the concept of red light of creation in the spiritual communities, it's not a concept that is really recognized much at all. And something that needs to be explored more. Well, I think I think it is. It's explained differently. And, and, and generally, from what I've seen, and correct me if, I, if I'm wrong, but from what I've seen, generally people focus on one or the other. But I've seen very few people who really have a, a like a, a deep mastery in, in both of those aspects. Oh, I don't. I'm not going to say that there's a bunch of masters out there that have mastered what you're describing. What I'm saying is that I think that what you're describing is described and talked about a lot. It just doesn't use the same nomenclature, semantics, you know. Um, but I still go back to the same thing, you know, not as a challenge. Yeah, it is a challenge. It's a challenge to me. It's a challenge to the community. How in the hell is this earth going to maximize the potential of this ascension opportunity? Um, if the way shower minority, the light workers can't find neutrality and can't detach from the narrative, the story, the metaphoric translation, the metaphoric experience. If we can't do, how the hell is the world going to do? I guess what I'm going back to is how do we stop saying they and stop saying them and and stop referring to these things as something separate from ourselves. Now, that's not fluffy love and light shit, okay? I recognize the darkness. I've had my own journey with darkness and light, and I know a lot of people have too. But at some point, we're here to shift a duality into a trinity energy. The trinity energy is where two or more gather, right? And alignment from pure love, from what they are and create a third energy that then works in cooperation with us, which I think is very prevalent on the earth today. That's just my opinion. But how, how it, to me, it's an all or nothing proposition. We either buy into unity consciousness 100,000%, knowing that we all come from the same place, and oneness is oneness, regardless of whether you're a Pleiadian or an Anunnaki. How do we know that you and I, in our personal inner work, when we bring congruence and balance and neutrality, zero point into our heart, that we're not also healing the Anunnaki Pleiadian Wars? But or the definitely, Pleiadian. when we heal ourselves, then it heals what's happening around. Yeah. And when we talk about oneness, yes, we're all one, we're all connected. Yeah. That's the white light truth. It's only 50% of the truth. So, so it's absolutely true. It's 100% true from the white light perspective. So you're saying that unity consciousness is 50% of the story. Yes. So unity consciousness, you're saying, is 50% of me. And then there's another 50%. That, that's developing your individuality. I'm sorry. Say it again. Fifty per the other fifty percent is about developing our individuality. Developing our individuality, right? Is that what yes. you said? Okay. So fifty percent is about developing our individuality. Fifty percent is about pure oneness. In the fifty percent that is about individuality, does that is that not um, oneness? we're all connected to the same source. It's like mm -hmm. we're drops. Uh, um, actually, that, that in, in, uh, in the book Bhagavad Gita, if some of read that, they, 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 they have very good explanations for that. I think that if I remember the way they explained it is it's like you have an ocean. You have drops in the ocean. So all of the drops are part of the, are part of the ocean, but still each yeah. particle of water. It's yeah, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to understand the distinction. Now, I may have just misunderstood it. 50% of my makeup is oneness. Okay? That's what you said, 
right? 50% of, of my makeup is on this because I'm a microcosm. Of, I mean, and, I mean, all, all, all of you is connected to, yeah. to the, it's so, like they, they're the upper reality, the lower reality, it's different yeah. perspective, different principles. Yeah. But so, we're all fully connected, like all of the laws apply equally from all the perspective. Look, let's start this. So the, the top one is the 50% oneness. Mm -hmm. the bottom one is individuality. Mm -hmm. I guess what you're saying is that if you could draw a, a oval around the whole, the both of these, mm -hmm. that's contained in oneness. Is that right? I'm trying to understand the difference between, because uh, when you talk about the lower chakras and the, the lower, the individuality 50%, you're talk, you were talking about distortion and duality. Now, that's something that's just applicable to this realm? I mean, the, the, the easiest way to look at it is, is to look at examples that are like at each of the extremes. Uh, like so, if you look like let's say a masculine extreme person that's really masculine, controlling energy, and like well, like in a healthy masculine, very um, let's say an entrepreneur makes makes a business structure and and really gets the message out and structures things, builds teams, and everything is very well structured and is really like like, like Tony Robbins is 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 like very strong in his masculine energy, hmm. or if you look at the extreme feminine, someone who's totally in the in the flow, creative flow, and and like it's just like the abundance is flowing into life. It's not like it's not structuring anything. Struggles a little bit with like the logistics and puts other team members to take care of that. But but things just flow into place and and just kind of going like magic. Now, if you're if you go fully into the red light, then you really step into power of of, of creation. <laughs> develop very strong abilities like of. of Love of creating the environment, creating, altering the environment around you in very strong sexual, uh, sexual and creative energy. And it's kind of like really harnessing that ball of creation. If you're fully okay. in the, in the, in the white light, then you're a kind of a transcending reality. And, and, and actually that kind of goes back to the Buddhism. I, I really liked all the philosophies of Buddhism, but one thing that I, don't like is that it tends to go into the extreme white where you just transcend completely the physical reality and, and go up there. But right now what's happening is all of those souls that transcended physical reality, they're falling back down into earth and not in a nice way. Okay. And that, the, that the, mes the message of Buddha, the, the message of Buddha was to transcend reincarnate, not just a slight correction is not to transcend reincarnation to to avoid the physical reality is to transcend the automatic reincarnation cycle so that you can consciously decide when and how you take a phys physical body without being in that automatic loop i didn't know that I've read I've read about that, but I've, I didn't know that was any of it, that was attributed to the Buddha. Not, but that's interesting. Um, and I get what you're saying. I think I got it all. So you could actually say, and let's not get stuck on the words, right? You could actually say that the lower the individuality part is organic to the earth experience. It's it's masculine. The the other part here, I'm just using this as an example. The feminine, let's say, like feminine, uh, female intuition, women's intuition. The women are connected to the higher aspects naturally. The men less inclined. That's why the men are driven by the lower chakras, right? But we, both the both the lower and the higher aspects have a masculine and feminine aspect to it. I'm not I'm not denying that. I'm just trying to understand what when I said it's all oneness. Right, so it's it's almost like you've. It, I guess what I was trying to say, I was trying to bring it back to, is how all of this relates to what we were talking about when the show started. You're talking about souls being taken over, uh, mm -hmm. souls in disempowered states, uh, a real threat that exists yet. I understand that that threat has lost 92, 93% of its power. I, because I, I, some of us have been 
yeah. ha- have been defending against it. Yeah, yeah. no, and, I, and I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm just looking at what's happening right now. What's going on right now? Do we not, are we not like a snowball going down a mountain, getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Is it like a, a, a fire hose that's been turned on and it can't be stopped now because of people like you and people that are watching that have done enough work with themselves to raise their frequency that is offsetting and reducing the power of these nefarious energies that you described that are now depleted by 93%. And my my goal in doing in talking with you and uh, my goal in talking with you is to give momentum to that snowball. And if there's a snowball rolling down the hill, you for sure want to see where that snowball is heading. You want to see ahead of you. Well, that's that's that's. I mean, I don't know. For me, the, there seems to be more and more emphasis today on the present. And there is no ahead of you. And that's like there is no behind you. Like like our power, and I could, and, and I'm saying this has been my experience and with the work I do, what I'm picking up as we head out of 2020 is our power, our power to put it in human terms is in the present moment. It is in our belief system that we're continuing to run. If that belief system is something's attacking me, if that belief system is I'm going to be sick, if that belief system is uh, they're not going to let me out of the country because it's a stupid law, you know, or, or whatever these things are, the only thing standing between us and our natural nature, which by human standards is supernatural, self-healing, teleportation, biocation, you know, traveling the cosmos and taking our physical body with us, transforming our physical body into an energetic Merkaba. I mean, to me, the only thing standing between the, our capabilities reaching that point is the belief systems that we have and the bullshit that we've been told. Whether it be Dracos that have lived here for a, a million years at the bottom of the ocean and have been manipulating us through archons in the fourth dimension or a mean mother-in-law or what, or, or lawless law. I mean, it, I don't know. To me, the universe is telling us, hey, you take control. You run this universe. You, your aligned heart is the seed of this creative life force. It does come from that masculine and feminine, higher and lower merging. And this is how the universe expands, not by playing these old loops over and over again, uh, whether they be family traumas or, or worldwide universal traumas. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like it, I feel like we've come a long way and all these narratives are just stories we can overcome. But as long as we believe it, it's real. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Funny because my uh, when I try to talk about a lot of the things happening to to, to, to my sister, she'll answer exactly that. That oh, it's, it's just it's, it's all stories, it's all beliefs. So I'm very used to uh, to hearing that. Uh, but that kind of uh, uh, that, that 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 kind of bl- blocked the communication there. So so uh, kind of since he, yeah, it kind of blocked communication there. But the the. The um, thing that everything is beliefs, everything is stories, that in itself is a, a belief system. True. So there's, so it, it is a belief system, and then there is simply, it is what it is, reality is for what it is. So that's one more layer of filter to, to remove. So if there's, if there's no belief system, let's use a a microcosmic example, Zen meditation. Zen meditation, you sit on a pillow, you're five feet from a wall, you look at the wall, and you allow those thoughts just to pass through until there's a state of thought. So I can't think of anything more present than that. You know, breathing, in rhythm, uh, no thought, 
I can't think of an example off the top of my head that would be more uh, an example of more presence of that. But there's there seems to be a second part to this trip that we're on, and that is what you talked about earlier: creation, creating things. I was told nine years ago when I started getting downloaded. I said, "What do I do?" And they said. Whatever you do, don't do anything that's been done before. That's not why you're here. You're here to, you know, pull pull from the Akashi or, or whatever you want to call it and your personal experience and create something that's never been remixed, you know? Um, so I understand what you're saying about that belief systems, that believing belief systems run the show and then create our experience is a belief system. So if we remove that, I'm in a place of no thought. I'm totally present. Yet, how do I create? And, and from there, you can observe from a detached perspective. Hmm. And from that detached perspective, then you have a lot more access to your power of creation. Yes, that's right. And, and so from this higher vantage point, from this higher perspective, is it, it, can we, well, that's not a good question. We have the, I'm going to make a statement. We have the ability to, you talked about those energies, those energies that infiltrated creation race, and they came from outside the universe, outside the, the, the multiverse. Well, so did we. So I can reach that place. I can go to that place way out there and observe everything from there, right? I can look at the Dracos. I can look at uh, the Anunnaki and the Archons and the Illuminati, all that stuff. I can look from there and yeah, see it a lot differently than I can from my galactic perspective. Is that something that's useful to people in your opinion? Would that bring some type of a natural balance to our field if we can go up there absolutely. and take a look at things from a higher perspective. Absolutely. That, that's that's what I, I do on a daily basis is going up there and observing what's happening. So you can, I mean, how are you going to get the truth by looking at the news on, on Facebook? Do you, you cannot do research on in a sea of disinformation. If you right. just get channel you know, messages, you don't really know where it's coming from. You need to look yourself but to really look at what's happening, you need to go up yeah. and from a detached perspective and look at the overall landscape of what is ha actually happening. Yeah. But by doing so, you also have to be careful because there's a lot of, if, if you expose yourself too much or go too high, uh, it, it, it can also, um, um, it's like when, when navigating those higher realms, there are uh, things that, that can be, uh, dangerous uh, as well so you need to know what you're doing and to 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 the extent that, that you feel guided to and to the extent of your capabilities yeah. it's and see this is where the the whole belief system thing gets it gets fuzzy because the soon as when somebody tells me and i'm not talking about you I'm just talking in general. I'm trying to make a point. When they say you have to do this or you need to do that, I immediately, I don't resist it, but I, I just no longer find any truth in that. And the reason I don't is because I realize it's a belief system that I'm going to accept, right? So I, I can accept that I can go into the higher realms and I can be, I'm as fearless as, as fearless can be. Some people might look at it and say, that's as stupid as stupid can be. But, <laughs> but this is this is where I'm going to put, you know, all my cards on the table, right? But I can also see where in a soul's journey, they might go into the same situation and they need to, they need to uh, have a certain element of fear or, uh, go into a certain level of uh, self-protection uh, because that's what the soul needs. That's the chaos that the soul needs to raise its frequency 
and awareness and experience. Yeah. And, and here I'm not I'm not telling anyone what to do. I'm focusing on simply talking about what is happening to give the awareness. Because what I found is with the amount of chaos that is happening and threats coming from a lot of different angles, there's no linear uh, principle that people can follow to keep themselves safe. Exactly right. The Everybody is going to have a different path. Even yeah. a lot of the food gets infected. A lot of the food... I, for. Uh, Lately, I cannot eat anything at my home. I need to go outside, and uh, and often just one or two places in the whole city where where I can eat. Either the food gets infected, or with the portal fragmentation, depending some food will depending on the timeline the food is coming from, it might plug me into bad timelines, cause energetic explosion or stuff. So I look, some of the food is red, uh, is either red, orange, or green. So I go color code. So we need to look at where where it's actually green. But I found for me it's green, and for the, another person is is red. So it's it's exactly. there, there's no linear logic to it. That's right. It's That's some people can eat it, some other people cannot, and 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 the only thing is you need to absolutely muscle test everything. Now there's a lot of poison that's injected in a lot of places, in some fishes, in in some pens, in uh, tattoo ink, and a variety of different places where they're they're putting poison. The only way you can know what is safe or not is to muscle test it or or, or using a pendulum or something. But there's no linear logic to that to no linear principles to keep oneself safe at this point. So can, I, I say that muscle testing is no longer an option. You need to have a way to validate information and to validate what is good or not for your body. For you, you need to muscle test absolutely everything. And in the current context. You, there's been a lot of traitors coming up to the surface uh, in the past couple of weeks. And I will also say you cannot really trust anyone. You need to really uh, be vigilant of everyone mm -hmm. and everything and muscle, muscle test everything. And then in what you consume, ingest, drink, smoke, uh, you can also alchemize. And, I, and this is just my opinion. You know, this is normally that's what I would do. But in this case, when it comes to energetic attacks, I can transmute the energy. But those those energetic infiltrations better to not mess with it, because coming from way too high level it just entangles you even more into yeah. the energy. But when it comes to um, coming from bad time, some some timelines are really uh, are good. Some timelines are bad. When it comes to colliding, conflicting timelines. That's not something you can transmute, and well, it's better to not mess with timelines. That just that just yeah. makes things worse and that's causes energy like, explosion. That's a that's another great example you've given. So, because I think the more coherence, congruence that we can create between below and above, if you want to put it that way, physical, non-physical, earth realm, dimensional realms. Um, better off we're going to be. So I look at what you're talking about. These energies that are coming, that are not of my frequency, that are coming from the non-physical to, let's say, infiltrate or attack me. What's the difference between them and somebody hitting me up on social media and giving me a hard time or uh, somebody attacking me, you know, like gossiping or, or whatever the case is? Energetically, it's the same thing. And like you said, you don't really want to you don't want to deal with that because you can't transform that because there's another energy there that's we're not of the same frequency and we all know this because we all tried to change people we try to you know how many people that woke up when they first woke up they're like hey nobody's listening to me my family thinks i'm crazy i can tell them what's going on but nobody's listening to me people hear what they want to hear so i think that's a really good point yeah, and, uh, and for a while, like you can, you can go on for a while kind of cruising by like on, on Facebook, connecting with like-minded people. But if various yeah. timelines start shifting in some nasty time, like some hell timelines, you cross a portal to hell or, or connect with really bad energies, that can, uh, with people you're not normally interacting with, there's some people you connect with, it just causes massive explosions. Yeah. It's like know, certain energies have to have to be careful what energy they're connecting with because of all and the tensions going on. Yeah, and I think the other thing too is like um, you said, okay, so it's it, you, we can't measure this thing. 
using linear measurement systems. You know, I, I'm thinking about some of what you're saying. I know in um, the first one, two, three, four, five years, really six years, but it it kind of, you know, it got less and less and less. I was attracting a lot of adverse energy in the physical, in the non-physical, okay? Something changed around 2016 for me. Something changed quite a bit. And, and it wasn't the same relationship from that point on. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm using this as an example. And I'm just, the reason I'm bringing it up is because it is nonlinear. Maybe what you are going through, I went through on the linear timeline, say seven or eight years ago or whatever, or I'm going to go through it in five years. Or So there, there's that part of it too. I think another... Um, well it would be good to look what what happened 2016 2015 2016 that was the peak of the war with the dracos the dracos got eliminated in 2016 and, and got kicked out so then I things come down after that's, that's interesting i would say that uh if i remember this now so 2016 summer of 2016 was the seminal point and again, as the individual goes, so goes collective. So it's not about me, but what you're saying, it's not a coincidence. Uh, but in the summer of 2016, that was the seminal point where I said, I accept all points of darkness and all points of light equally. I am the universe. This happened in a cemetery next to where I, I was living. Now, the interesting thing about that, and that would have been July of 2016, uh, there was a lot of chaos still happening, like on a personal level and the world, I guess. And um, the interesting thing was, right after that happened, there's a lion's gate. And in that lion's gate, all these divine essences came into the, my studio. There was about 15 or 20 of them, some I'd never seen before. Like Hathors from Egypt or Amazonian women. Um, and then there was like Merlin and Jermaine and all these other ones, right? But there was a reptilian came in as well. And it sat on the couch and we were all around and sat on the couch and it was very sad. I don't know if reptilian or Anunnaki. But it was definitely not in its normal energetic state. And basically, it's look almost like defeated or sad. So maybe there's, maybe that's, and I do remember people talking about uh, the Dracos being removed from the realm. Uh, I just, I don't remember, was it 2015 or 2016? You said it was 2016. 2015 was the peak of the war. I had my alchemy, uh, alchemy teacher, very powerful alchemist. I could, mm -hmm. could heal cancer in half an hour, but he, mm -hmm. he got killed by the Dracos in 2000, uh, summer of 2015. Had an operation for the eyes, complication with the eyes. His defenses went down. He died right there. But 2016, the Dracos got eliminated. Hmm. Lots of information. So, and, and how, and, and you started on the show talking about these attacks. We're going to run out of time in a minute, but um, how are you dealing with that now? And so, that? what what I uh, what what we we came to realize is that what are they seeking? They're seeking something that's here on the Earth. They seek to get some like some objects of power from the lowest universes and from the highest universes and using these objects to collapse from the highest to the lowest point and collapse the, the multiverse. That's happened in many multiverses. And collapse so they, they need certain objects from the yeah. highest universe yeah. and from the lowest universe. And those objects that they seek from the lowest universe are here on Earth. Okay. And so and that's what, what they seek. That's what they need. What would this collapse achieve? Resetting the multiverse. And, is, and then taking, they seek to 
re re collapse the multiverse as a whole to take back to take control of the multiverse from its seed point of creation and their ultimate goal will be to reset the entire old traverse and keep it in a loop that keeps it locked into oneness okay so ultimately and from your perspective what is god what is the goddess what is one uh, and, and as an example what you just described a lot of people will say this on earth how could you let this happen why is this happening i mean is it perfection what you're describing such as taking from lower and taking from the higher and collapsing it to control I mean, the, their idea <coughs> i actually had an image of like what they're actually seeking to do and it's like and the image the image that came to my mind is that like at the origin there was oneness and then the uh, oneness got corrupted and fell into duality and then creation got created from there and then what they seek to do is to correct that corruption of oneness and reset it back to oneness and that's what the demons mm -hmm. believe in but that, that's actually that principle of oneness is like 100 percent white light but that's like a very dark side of but, that pure white light but in the sacred book it says the sacred books it says let there be light yes so if there wasn't I mean, how do we know that the darkness the holy darkness isn't the holiest of the whole I mean, we don't really know but um you were just saying about the i, I mean the, 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 the like you look at, at at beings like like lucifer and the b b bigger demon like they think of themselves as enlightened beings and a lot of pe people are really like holy enlightened from a certain perspective i mean look at uh, yeah the, the road to hell's paved good intentions too yes. much <laughs> darkness is not good too much light is not good think about it how yes. many people and and it's not about light versus darkness now no, it's it, like about like there's the like the white light versus the red light it's yeah. kind of a balance it's like which came first the singularity or duality actually both mm -hmm. existed simultaneously because exactly. both are fundamental principles exactly. of the universe. What are, what are your what are your thoughts? There there is there are credible and I won't get into names, but there's credible um, intelligence that's come in through downloads for credible people that basically explain it like this: We have a soul lineage. Um, we choose where we want to go, what planets, what universes, what multiverses, what galaxies, what solar systems, what lives. Uh, and we do this in an, in a never ending journey to ever expand the soul and by virtue of that, the universe and that our earth experience or experiences is another, although seemingly fantastic and incredible stop on an endless path of incarnations what are your thoughts on that yeah i, I agree the, the, the way i look at it like what what is what is the ultimate like goal of life uh, and, and some people think that the goal of life is to transcend life and kind of mm -hmm. escape the physical reality but my perspective the goal of life is never-ending creation learning to live more and more in harmony with the natural laws of the universe in this cycle of of never-ending creation and 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 it's like always reaching a higher state of of harmony of perfection of of self-realization yeah that's my perspective yeah well, it's the same thing yeah so in other words that that tells me for me uh don't get too excited <laughs> don't get too caught up in the story because you know i can click my heels there and go home anytime i want to you know I mean, it's uh but but at the same time there's something there's something incredibly powerful and important uh about this earth this earth realm and the and the point that we're at the point that we're at, which has been prophesized for thousands and thousands of years, right? And uh, let's see what happens. We, we should do this again. 
Uh, and, and, and and coming to the the question of like what what we're actually doing about it. So I I talked about there's these objects that they seek, and what we came to realize is that things are not going to improve over here until we go and recover, collect those objects that they're seeking. Now, I cannot find them myself. But my daughter, I have a nine, nine-year-old daughter. She's able to, she, she, her vision is even clearer than mine. She's able to locate those things uh, with her. She has like internal GPS. There's mm -hmm. some objects we need to recover uh, in, in Germany, in, in uh, Italy, in Australia, in Canada. They're, they're not those monoliths that have been showing up here. No, 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 no. I'm kidding. It was a joke. I'm kidding. <laughs> no. Right. Uh, and so we, we we need to go and collect these things because things are not going to improve on, until we do. So we realize that we actually need to do that. And if we don't, it's like for, for now, like we've been holding on with the attack for eight months. But if we don't go and collect those things, uh, eventually they're going to kill us. So, the, so we don't have the option of going or not. So we need to go that trip. Now the problem is Europe is in total lockdown. So in order to lockdown, people need to be aware of what is actually happening. The virus, they're locking people down in their house while, while they're killing the population themselves. And that awareness needs to spread because no, no one, nobody's, I'm not hearing anyone talking about what is going or on. We can, or we can just make up our mind on a personal level and say, I refuse to participate. Regardless but the, but the word the word needs to spread until it, um, until uh, like until consciousness reaches a certain point that causes, um, like the the that causes the the agenda to collapse. They can only operate in the shadow. They what cannot operate in the awareness of in the awareness of life. When people look at what they're doing, they're not able to do anything. They can only do well, things when people are not looking. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's a debatable. But um, what percentage of the people in the world do you think believe there's a, a, a legitimate virus? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's really, it, it really matters. I've, I've been, the, the virus was really there. I've talk, been talking a lot about it. Nobody believes me. So it's like, well, let me put it, it to you now. It doesn't really How, matter. Let me, let me put it to you this way. What percentage of the people do you feel on the face of the earth today, regardless of how many there are, mm -hmm. uh, what percentage do you feel are not on the program that are, that are, that are sovereign, that the majority of their energy, the vast majority of their energy is sovereign and frequency is carrying this pure light that you talk about? Um... Now the thing about sovereignty, well, for for a long time, like for the past fifty years, like was, ever since there's it's been the movement, of the New Age movement and spirituality, it's been the the New Age movement's been uh, created by the CIA and it's been contained within a certain container of false light. And uh, as long as you operate within the principle that they that that they want people to operate with, so that we focus on our own personal reality. And don't get in their way. Don't really uh, address real. Don't don't address reality. Don't look in their way. Don't step into our power. Then we're totally fine and can live in a like in our own little bubble. But it's been operating in that false light matrix for a long time. Now that false light matrix has been collapsing. But instead of that, now there is the energetic infiltrations uh, that's pretty much infecting everyone. So, in well, regards to that, what's the level of real sovereignty or what? level that people think I, they're sovereign while being I, inside of a certain container. Saying. I get what you're saying, but you also said that 92.7% of their power has been taken away. And now you make a statement. I'm not trying to, to challenge you. I'm just trying to get some clarity. Now you make a statement that it's infecting all of us. Um, right. I, 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 before I realized about the energetic infiltration for the, the spring summer, the infiltrations were controlling about 33% of the planet as a whole. Okay. Talking about human consciousness and okay. Gaia consciousness. 
Now, right now, it's down to about 8.9% of the planet, yeah. as a, of all consciousness of the planet as a whole, yeah. which is Thank still a lot. And if talking purely about the human consciousness of the planet, I would say that about 38.9% infected on average of the human consciousness. You know, all I got to say is, if I didn't have another show in eight minutes, we could keep going. <laughs> How long did we go? Two hours? Yeah, about two yeah. hours, and there's still a lot that we could, could talk about. Absolutely, yeah. I just want to say this. It's been a great conversation. Uh, and I, This and is I, one of the... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, and I, and I released several other, uh, several videos that explain the whole situation and things to do about it and, and all of that. So for are they people on YouTube? Want to... Are they on YouTube? Uh, uh, yeah, they're on YouTube. What uh, the, uh, what's the YouTube channel? Uh, well, actually, if you search, the, the main video is Journey to the World. Let, let me just, if you search Journey to the World. Okay. Uh, no, it's not, it's not, it's not. So search Journey to the World and. What is the name, my, of, the, what is the name of the YouTube channel? Okay. Well, it's uh, uh, it, on, under my name, Etienne Charlin. Okay. I think I spelled that right. Nope. Oh, hang on. Yeah. We've got uh, Marie Bachelor coming on next, everybody. All right. There's a YouTube channel, the same name. I just want to say this has been a great conversation. I enjoyed it. This this is part of the reason I love doing the job because uh, the openness is to me what offers the code, the expansion of the experience. And, uh, and I love when it happens. And I also want to say, we are kicking ass. We're kicking ass. And I love the intel that you bring forth. It it falls in alignment with a lot of what I've been seeing out there. Um, we've come a long way, and we got this. You know? I mean, we beat it all. We beat the GMOs, the fluoride, right? The chemtrails, you know, the TV programming. We beat it all. And now we got these young kids like your daughter coming in. And the frequency the carrying is is probably our secret weapon. <laughs> they can't continue with these kids. There's no way. I got to run. We got to show in five minutes. Okay. All I'll right. Be it's been uh, great talking with you. Yeah. Let's do it again. Let's do it again uh, next month. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it after the uh, 20th of January. Let's see who. Pro present. Probably. Probably around that. Uh, by that time, I'll probably have left and will be traveling to Europe and around the world. We'll, we'll figure something out. I'll be in touch. Okay. All right. All blessings to you.